And go ahead. Hey, Jeff, uh, first of all, um, if you could kind of give me what led to the decision on Shaw and McGee, and if you could kind of look back at uh, their time here. I know when you guys made those signings and also Davis, we were looking at a big investment in the bullpen. If you can, first of all, tell us what happened at the end, what, what brought you to the decision, kind of review the time that they spent. Sure. Hey, Thomas. Um, hey there. So uh, there are a number of things that went into the, the decisions that happened today. Uh, we are, you know, coming up on decision-making time um, in camp here based on some of the rules that are in place. So uh, that's part of it. Uh, but the, the, the primary decision um, or the, the primary piece of the decision was, uh, you know, past performance and, and expected future performance. Um, you know, it's been uh, the last couple of years has, has been a rough go for, for both guys uh, in terms of consistency of performance. And, um, you know, to this point in this camp, we really didn't see, you know, anything that we thought was going to change that. Um, the second piece uh, of the decision, you know, is kind of connected to the third piece. Uh, we have um, a number of players on the roster currently that are out of options. So, um, and we, we expect them and want them to be part of, of this club. And... Uh, in addition to that, uh, there are a number of, of decisions and additions to the roster that we uh, will make or intend to make. And so uh, roster space is, um, is something that we needed to create. And uh, since we're still working with a 40-man a roster, major league roster, in spite of all the new rules in, in particular for this season. So, um, you know, we wished uh, both Brian and Jake the best. Uh, Jake's been here for, for a number of years. Um, and, uh, you know, there was, there was some good, um, there were some rough times, but, uh, you know, those guys, uh, you know, we, we know that they, you know, while they were here, um, they, they gave it a, a true professional effort. Uh, you know, it just didn't work and, and we're ready to move on, giving some opportunity to some other guys. Warren, do we have a bad connection? No, you're calling you're calling no, Mark is good. You're fine. Yeah. You look good. Hey hey Jeff, it's it's Nick Roke. I don't um uh, I'm not hearing Nick Parson, but I think I'm I'm unmuted. So I'm gonna ask you a question. Okay, go ahead. Uh, the um you know the idea philosophically in sort of bigger picture. The idea um, of having a, a veteran bullpen pitching, especially the late innings behind a young rotation, it really worked, I think, for you in, in 2017 and 18. Um, does, does, the, does 2019 or, or the moves today, does that dissuade you from doing that in the future? Is that something that you still like as a general philosophy? I know you don't like to stick to a, a specific uh, plan all the time, but is it, is it, you know, can you still draw on 17 and 18 in the future with those kinds of philosophies? Yeah, I, I think so. I, I, I think it, it always comes down to the, to the men in the uniform, right? Whether they're rookies or middle-aged or, you know, uh, wily veterans that have been around for a long time. Uh, it still comes down to what they're made of and, and, and how they operate as a group together. Uh, but I, I don't, you know, I, I, it's not just the bullpen, I would say. Uh, you know, I think there's probably uh, – we've had it for almost forever here where there's a, a mixture of, of young players who are breaking into the league and establishing themselves and, and veterans who have been around for a little bit there to, to act as, uh, you know, you hope for stabilizers and, and producers and performers and mentors and – all the things that go on to, you know, there or go into being teammates. Uh, so I, I don't, I don't necessarily see us, uh, you know, moving away from that sort of a philosophy. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
Who's next? Uh, are you hearing me? We can now. Okay. All right. Uh, I, I, I think I couldn't hear. Um, yeah, Nick's having some problems, I think. Yeah, okay. All right. So when you look at this, I think what you just said to Nick, you're not going to necessarily say, okay, no more big expenditures on the free agent market with relievers. But what do you feel this taught you guys? I mean, you look at Brian Shaw, the way he pitched down in the zone for Cleveland. Looked like that stuff would translate here with Jake McGee. He was a fastball reliant guy that was that had to develop some other pitches it didn't quite happen is there anything that you can take from this experience to say okay this is information for the next time we go after guys or is it just strictly who the individuals are you going after and um, you really can't apply the lessons of McGee and Shaw to whatever you're going to do in the future well, look there, you know, there are there are never any guarantees of of performance no matter you know, no matter whether you're a free agent that comes to a team or you've been drafted and, and developed and moved up a system um, or you were part of a trade um, you know each, each guy takes his own path in this game uh, so uh, there are a lot of examples again not just in the bullpen in our history, both recent history and uh, deeper into our history, where where players have come here and you know, on free agent contracts and done very well, uh, there is, there's histories of of guys on every team coming in on uh, on free agent contracts and and having some good seasons, having uh, some really good seasons and and struggling at times during seasons as well. So, um, you know, I don't I don't think there are any huge uh, you know, lessons that we're going to take and, and drastically move in, in one direction, uh, you know, because we said goodbye to, to Jake and to Brian today. All right, guys, before we go to uh, Troy Rank, one note, we're going to limit follow-up questions uh, because we're getting so much ambient noise. We're going to be muting you after you uh, ask your question. So, uh, Troy Rank, why don't you go ahead? Jeff, can you hear me okay? I can. Yep. So what does this mean for that seventh and eighth inning? Is that Estevez and Diaz, or who are the prime candidates to pitch? Uh, you know, Bud has talked about Davis will certainly get first chance at closing. What do you? Wh who are the guys you are eyeing in that seventh, eighth inning role uh, beyond Oberg, obviously? Who are the other guys we should look for to, now to compete with uh, Shaw and um, McGee gone? Yeah. I, I, look, I mean, you've – You've touched on a number of the guys that have uh, that have done it recently for us in those sort of leverage innings, and so, uh, buddy, you know, and our and our coaches make those decisions in game, and they make them game to game, and they make them series to series, and you know they keep the pulse of of who the right people are at the right time based on how games are going and and how guys are feeling as we progress uh, through a season, but. Uh, you know, the, the, the names that you kind of rattle off are, are obvious names to consider just because they've been around here and they've done really good things, uh, especially recently uh, in those types of, of important innings. All right, Tracy Ringlesby, go ahead. Tracy Ringlesby. Yes. You're Go muted, on. Trace. They asked me to. So. Along the lines of uh, the other questions, with all the young arms that are suddenly starting to emerge, you know, the Diaz's and those guys, does that make it also a thing of feeling you have potential guys to step into those roles with what you've seen out of them the last year and a half? Yes. Um, you know, we feel like uh, young guys like, well, Hyro's not young anymore, but uh, his arm is young. Uh, he's been through a lot over the last two to three years. Uh, but we feel like he's in a good place. We feel like uh, a kid like Yancy Almonte is ready to to, to take a next step, um, and uh, and there are others, right? and and there are others that um, that are going to get an opportunity, hopefully to um, you know to do good things this year, and uh, and it'll be a new it'll be a new group in the bullpen, right? And uh, and they'll have to come together as a group and and do their thing. Um, and, and, and find a way to do it quickly because we all know that this, uh, 
you know, this will be a quick 60 game sprint and hopefully we can get the whole thing in. But, uh, you know, we'll need that group to kind of come together and, and coalesce quickly um, so that we're ready to go, um, you know, on Friday. All right, Thomas Harding, go ahead. Yes, um, you, I'm looking at some of the non-roster invitees like Chris Owings, Matt Kemp, where it looks like they could be in a position to, you know, grab a spot here. How about Daniel Bard? I mean, from what you've seen of him, I know there are a few days left in camp, but does he look like he's got another, um, you know, like, like he's kind of forged himself a chance to get a role here? Yeah, funny you should mention those three particular guys, Thomas. Um, but we, uh, about an hour ago, we sat with Mr. Bard, Mr. Kemp, and Mr. Owings, and we informed them that they had made the team. So um, I, I, I think that's an answer to your question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, and um, I guess uh, if you could just break down, especially with the Daniel Bard, what you saw from him um, – I mean, the stuff looks nasty, doesn't it? Well, it is nasty. Uh, it, so far, it has been. Um, I was talking with his agent briefly uh, this afternoon, and uh, you know, I kind of talked about it. This is a nice, a nice comeback story already, um, and now it's it's on all of us to help make it a, a great comeback story for him. Um, and we, you know, we we definitely believe that he is going to help us win games. Um, and uh, it's a long time, you know, it's a, it's a story of perseverance and uh, struggle and, and picking yourself up off the mat and uh, giving it another shot because you believe in yourself like Daniel does and, and finding the right situation and then, and then taking advantage of the opportunity. And that's what he's done to this point. Uh, and really no different than, than Chris Owings as well, right? I mean, uh, the last couple of years for him have been uneven, and 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 there's been struggle, but we feel like he's a he's a good fit, and and we've already talked at times over the past couple of weeks about the potential fit of a Matt Kemp um, on this team in particular this year uh, with the DH and everything um, that's a little bit different roster wise. So um, we just formalized that today, and we're excited about all three of those guys. Thanks, Jeff. Mm -hmm. All right, does anyone else have any questions for uh, Jeff here? Give it a couple seconds if you guys want to get your hands up. Oh, hold on. Let's see here. Where, where, where is it? Uh... All right, Kevin Henry, go ahead. Thanks, Jeff. I guess since they're asking you about some of the non-roster invitees, should uh, ask about Tyler Kinley as well and, and uh, what today's moves may mean for him. Well, uh, you know, obviously we like Tyler. Um, you know, we have we have uh, some decisions to make still, um, and I think you'll see a slew of those decisions in the in the next couple days here that affect our roster and, and affect uh, some of the players that are already on the roster. So, um, you know, Tyler's certainly getting strong strong consideration uh, for a bullpen role and. Uh, you know, we, but we we haven't finalized um, what our what our active roster is going to look like quite yet. Um, we're getting to that point, but it'll still be a couple days here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is uh, all we have for Jeff. Jeff, thanks so much for uh, joining in with us. And, uh, hold on, what? Thomas, we're going to give you uh, one more question there. <laughs> Go ahead. Thomas. Thanks. Got to have one more question. Um. You have a couple of guys that that will that you've announced who are going to be in the satellite group. Are you, have you decided anyone else that you're going to add to the total um, with the limit up to sixty? And or, are you replacing these guys with a couple of bodies else? I mean, a couple of players else. Um, yeah, the the satellite situation is still uh, for us uh, some a little bit of a work in progress. Um, I do think that we are going to um, most likely fill up that grouping, uh, probably close to 30 players there, um, maybe 29. 
maybe 28. Um, you know, we did have uh, a little transaction that slipped under the radar last couple of days, but Brian Mundell um, made a decision to retire from the game. And, um, you know, he wanted to move along and, and, and do something new and exciting with his life. And so um, that has opened up a spot. And, uh, and so we, we still are going to kind of finalize some, some young players, I think, that are going to come and join uh, the satellite group. Um, we're hoping that it's, it's in Albuquerque. Uh, and I've been watching, uh, I've been watching a lot of Breaking Bad, catching up, binging on Breaking Bad recently. So, um, refreshing myself on, on Albuquerque, but, uh, we're not a hundred percent sure that it yet it's going to be Albuquerque. Um, there are some, you know, COVID virus concerns and, and certain governmental things that are going on, um, in, in New Mexico right now. So, uh, there's some of this that's that's in flux a little bit right now, and hopefully we have clarity on the entire satellite situation within the next, I would say, three to four days. All right, thank you so much, Jeff. Uh, if everyone wants to hang out, we're going to get Bud Black on here uh, momentarily. So thank you, Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, guys. Yep.